Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue to work on our first person shooter. And this time around, we're going to make grenades. And the way this is going to work, we can press a letter on the keyboard, like let's say the letter R, and it throws a grenade. Alright, so this is actually pretty fun. So let's go ahead and dive into this and see how we can do it in Roblox Studio. Alright, so to make these grenades, we're going to start under the starter player. And then underneath the starter player scripts, we're going to be adding a local script. Inside the script here, we're going to be using the user input service. So let's go ahead and start with a variable for that. So we'll say local, and then user input. And this is going to be equal to game, colon, get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put user input service. After that, we're going to define the player. So we'll say local player and this is going to be equal to game dot players dot local player the next thing we're going to do is define a function that will run whenever some type of input is detected so we'll say local function the name of the function can be throw we're going to pass in two parameters one's going to be input the other one is going to be game processed Inside this function, we're going to start by saying if not game processed. Then what we're going to do is say if input dot user input type. And we're going to check to see if this is equal to enum dot user input type. And then from this list of user input types, we're going to check to see if the keyboard was pressed. If we notice some input from the keyboard, then what we're going to do is check to see which letter on the keyboard that was. So we'll say local key code. And we're going to set this equal to input dot key code. So that I'll store whichever letter was pressed. And then to check to see if it was our target letter, we're going to say if key code is equal to enum dot key code. So from all the possible key codes, we're going to be checking for the letter R. If the letter R was pressed, then what we're going to do first is just print. And then inside the parentheses, we'll just say something like grenade. All right, so the reason we're doing that is just as a simple test so that we know this is working. Once we know that it's picking up that the letter R was pressed, then we can actually write some code that'll make the grenade. So that handles the function. So down here at the bottom, we're going to say user input dot input began colon connect and then we're going to connect this with our throw function all right so let's go ahead and run the game and see if this part is working all right so if you have the output open then when you press the letter r you can see that the word grenade is printed in the output so that lets us know that everything's working so let's go ahead and move on to the next step which will be actually creating the grenade okay so to make these grenades appear on the server what we're going to have to do is use remote events so before we head back to the scripting, let's start under replicated storage. And we're going to add a new remote event. And we're going to rename this event to grenade event. After you do that, we're going to head back to our local script inside of starter player scripts. And let's go ahead and rename this one to grenade. Inside the script here, we're going to start with variables for the replicated storage and also for the remote event. So right here, we'll say local replicated storage. And we're going to set that equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we'll put replicated storage. Next, we're going to make a variable for the remote event. So we'll say local and then grenade event. And we'll set that equal to replicated storage, which is where it's located. We'll say colon, wait for child. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put grenade event. All right, so now instead of printing the word grenade, we're going to trigger the remote event. So we'll say grenade event, colon, fire server. And inside the parentheses will be information we send to the server. So what we want to send to the server is the position of the mouse. 
So to do that, we're going to create one more variable up top here. So for this one, we'll say local mouse, and we'll set this equal to player colon and get mouse. Then down here in the parentheses, we'll say mouse dot hit dot p. So what this is going to do, it's going to take the current position of the mouse and it'll send that to the server. So next, to actually script this on the server side, we're going to head up to the server script service. Click on the plus sign and add a script. Go ahead and rename this script to grenade create. Inside of this script, we're going to start with the same two variables for the replicated storage and also for the remote event. So let's just go ahead and go back to this script real quick and we'll copy them. After that, we're going to write a function that'll run whenever this remote event gets triggered. So we'll say grenade event dot on server event. And then we'll say colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're going to say function. So this script is going to be very similar to when we created the bullet. So what we're going to do is we're going to say local grenade is going to be equal to instance dot new. We're going to be creating a part. And then after this, we're just going to be defining some properties of the part. And then we'll actually make this grenade move. So first we'll say grenade dot name. And this is going to be equal to grenade. Then we'll say grenade dot parent. And this is going to be equal to game dot workspace. We'll say grenade dot shape. And this time, instead of a cylinder, let's go ahead and choose a ball shape. So we'll say enum dot part type. And then from the part types, we're going to select ball. Then we're going to set its size. So we'll say grenade dot size. And this is going to be equal to vector three dot new. And then here is where you're going to define the size of your grenade. I found that doing one by one by one works pretty well. But if you want to, you can either increase or decrease these numbers to adjust the size of it. After that, we're going to define its color. So we'll say grenade dot brick color is going to be equal to brick color dot new. And then for this, I'm going to choose dark green. All right, so the next part we're going to work on is actually getting this grenade to move when the player presses the letter R. So I'm going to start by saying local speed, and I'm going to set this equal to 100. You can adjust this value here depending on how far and how fast you want the grenade to go. So after the speed, we're going to say grenade dot C frame is going to be equal to C frame dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to give it the starting location and also the ending location. And while I'm thinking about that, I forgot to put the parameters inside the function here. So inside this function, we're going to get the player, which will be the player that pressed the letter R. And in addition to that, we also gave it the position of the mouse, which is this value right here. So I can store that inside of a variable, and let's just call it mouse, and then POS for position. Okay, so for my C frame, the starting position is going to be player dot character. And then I'm going to start it at the player's head, so I'm going to say dot head dot position. Okay, so that's where the grenade's going to start. And then the ending position is going to be wherever the mouse is. So I'm going to say mouse and then POS. Finally, we're going to say grenade dot velocity is going to be equal to grenade dot C frame dot look vector. And then we're going to multiply this by our speed. All right, so we still need to add another script that's going to make this grenade explode. But for now, let's just go ahead and test it out and make sure that when I press the letter R, it shoots off the grenade. All right, so I'm going to press the letter R and we can see if the grenade gets created. All right, and we can see when I press the letter R that a green ball shoots from the player's head.
And if you want to, you can adjust that speed value to either increase or decrease the speed, and also how far the grenade's gonna go. All right, so now that that's working, the next step is going to be writing a script that's gonna make this green ball explode. So to do that, we're going to write a script in the server storage. So we'll click on the plus sign and then press on script. I'm going to rename the script to grenade explode. And then for the script, what we're gonna do is say local grenade is gonna be equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to wait for one second. And you can either keep it like that if you want to, or if you'd rather use a variable, then you can do something like explode time. And then up here, you can define what explode time is. So we'll say local explode time. And you can set that to whatever value you want. So if you do one second, then one second after the grenade gets created, it's going to explode. If you do it for maybe three seconds, then it's gonna take a lot longer before the grenade explodes. All right, so after it waits for that set period of time, we're gonna say local explosion. And this is gonna be equal to instance dot new. And inside the parentheses, we're gonna put explosion. Next, we're going to say explosion dot parent. And this is gonna be equal to game dot workspace explosion dot position. And this is gonna be equal to the position of the grenade. So we'll say grenade dot position. After that, we're going to say explosion dot blast radius. And we're going to set this to some value. So if we say something like 10, then in a 10 stud radius is where the parts are going to be affected by this explosion. If you want to, like we did before, let's go ahead and convert this number into a variable. So we can say something like radius. And then up top here, We'll say local radius, and we'll set this equal to 10. If you want a larger blast radius, then increase this number. If you want a smaller radius, then decrease the number. And finally, what we're going to do is after the grenade creates the explosion, we're going to get rid of that part. So we'll say grenade, colon, and destroy. And I realized for this whole script, I spelled grenade incorrectly. So let me fix that real quick. All right, so that looks better now. So the last thing we need to do is attach the script to the grenade part. To do that, we're gonna go back to this script right here. And at the bottom here, we're gonna say local grenade script. And this is gonna be equal to game dot server storage colon find first child. And then what we're looking for is grenade explode. To make a copy of it, we're gonna say colon and clone. And then to attach it to the part, we'll say grenade script dot parent is going to be equal to our part. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out and see if we get our explosion. Okay, so when I press the letter R, I have the grenade. And then after one second, it explodes. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.